chin up views, show traps. They are so important. They are as important as an occlusal picture, a smiling picture, as any other picture that you're going to take. And the lab actually has a super cool version of the chin up view that you can get if you use diagnosis, uh, digital diagnosis and treatment planning. Now, when you have a deep bite, okay, it's often difficult to bond the lower brackets without, you know, um, occlusal interferences, bracket bond failures, and you very typically have trapped teeth. You have no working overjet. So the second thing I want you to look at when you're evaluating a case is the overbite, overjet, and chin up view. Okay, this case, again, retruded lower anterior teeth behind ideal arch form. We want those teeth to move forward, right? But now we're going to look at our overbite, overjet, chin up view. And what do we see? We see the lower incisors hitting the back of the uppers, right? What's going to happen when I try and move those lower anterior teeth forward? Nothing. They're trapped. They're stuck. There's no working overjet, no path to tooth movement. What if we have another scenario, very flared teeth outside of normal arch form? We want to bring those teeth back to closed spaces. We still want to look at our overbite, overjet, and chin up view. And what do we see? We again see the lower incisors right on the back of the upper incisors. What's going to happen when I try and bring those upper teeth back to close the spaces? Nothing. They're stuck. There's no working overjet, no path for those teeth to move. Again, these chin-up views show traps. Get used to looking at the patient from this view. Now remember, the first thing I want you to look at when you're evaluating a case is the arch form. So when we're looking down at that lower arch form, we see a lot of crowding you might right off the bat be thinking, hey, we're going to have to extract here. But don't forget to look at the upper arch form as well. When we're looking at the ideal upper arch form, we see this, okay? We see crowded, retruded teeth behind the ideal arch form, right? So we now know that when we regain ideal arch form, the teeth are going to look like this. Now, what we've actually done is we've created some temporary overjet, what we call working overjet, okay? So with that working overjet, now when we're looking at that lower anterior arch form, we see that those crowded, retruded teeth now have a path where they can move forward and correct all of the crowding, okay? Working overjet, such a valuable, valuable concept. So let's talk a little bit more about working overjet, because we use this concept no matter what type of orthodontic treatments we are doing. Now that last case had something like this, retruded upper anterior teeth that are actually touching the lower incisors, right? The lower incisors have no path to move. So what are we going to do? We're going to regain ideal arch form on the upper by moving those teeth forward, right? Once we do that, what do we have? We now have created working overjet. Now with that working overjet, the lower anterior teeth actually have a path to move. So now we're going to move those retruded lower anterior teeth forward like so and alleviate the crowding. Okay? Working overjet, so, so, so important. 